everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk, I'm John, and today we're going to be talking about the 1987 film Angel Heart and its 4K Blu-ray release. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, film reviews, TV reviews, video game reviews, we try and do them all here on this channel. Nothing helps us out more than by you liking this video and subscribing. So Angel Heart was released on March 6, 1987, stars Mickey Rourke, Robert De Niro in a small role, and Lisa Bonet. Mickey Rourke plays Harvey Angel. He's a private investigator in New York City and he's hired by Louis Cipher, played by Robert De Niro, to investigate or just find if Johnny Favorite, a client of his, is still alive because he can't find him. He gets a letter every year from, or every month rather, a institution that he's believed to be in, but because he got hurt or got in an accident before he could finish paying off his debt to Lewis Cipher, he needs to find out if he's still alive and that's why he hires Mickey Rourke to investigate. And this is a neo-noir film so, you know, it starts out as a simple find this guy for me and it unravels into so many different places that you wouldn't expect it to go because that's how these kind of mystery movies work. And I think that this is overall a pretty good movie. The first time I saw this movie, I was pretty young. I was like 14 and I was blown away by the twist ending. And I don't know why, because looking back on it now, it is very obvious, but I mean, I guess that's the point. You're supposed to lay out the clues. And this is directed by Alan Parker, who has also directed some great films as Mississippi Burning or The Commitments. So he knows how to craft the film. And he also wrote the screenplay for this, which is adapted from a novel. So. He knows how to craft the film that he wanted to craft, and I think he did a pretty good job. There are some screenplay issues, and um, Robert De Niro sometimes can feel like he's in a different role, but overall, I think this is a very good film, and I think it's pretty underappreciated now because it's shot very well, it looks beautiful. I always did admire the cinematography of it because, you know, it takes place in 1955, and you truly believe that it's 1955, you know? They're walking around New York City, it's cold, you got the snow like that. If you've lived in New York, you know, or Detroit or other cities where it snows a lot, you got like those, like, even weeks after it snows, there's still little patches of it, but the sidewalk always looks a mess. And they really did pay attention to those little details, and that's something I always appreciate in film. Now, before we go on, I want to talk spoilers about this, because this is a mystery movie. I feel like the twist ending is plays a big part in this film, and whether or not it's good or bad, because it, you either have to be on board or not with that because that's really what this whole film is building towards actually the screenplay I feel like concentrates too much on that and kind of forgets a little bit about all these other characters because they're just trying to unravel this mystery and I mean that could be okay but there are certain aspects of the screenplay that did bother me a little bit but that's just me looking at it now because now when I watch films I have to pay attention to every little detail and it would be just more little nitpicks nothing too crazy so I want to talk spoilers about the end. So that is your warning. So at the beginning of the movie, Robert De Niro is revealed to be Louis Cipher. He's hired Mickey Rourke's character of Harvey Angel to find Johnny Favorite. Turns out Johnny Favorite is Mickey Rourke. And this is all one big conspiracy set up by Louis Cipher to really just mess around with Johnny Favorite, who he believes screwed him over all these years ago because Louis Cipher, that's the devil. Louis Cipher. Lucifer. I didn't notice that at all the first time I watched this movie. And when you watch it every time after, you're like, how did I not realize that? I'm sure most people have realized it immediately that that's the devil. Because, I mean, he's got the long fingernails, he's got the long black hair, and Robert De Niro's playing that role. He's chewing up some scenery. He feels like sometimes he's in a different role compared to everybody else. Everyone else is kind of playing their roles all very straight-laced, whether it be the cops down in New Orleans and Lisa Bonet, or everybody up in New York, because there's this great couple that he goes to the beach to see, and they're all playing their roles pretty well. Although, I do admit the wife at one point when she's in the water, her character, I thought she actually nailed that role, so I actually did enjoy her and the husband. I thought they all played their roles very well. And it just feels like sometimes Robert De Niro's in a different movie. You know, this is Robert De Niro. He's getting, we've seen this a million times where he gets hired for a small role like this or Backdraft, Copland, where he's just in there and he's in there chewing scenery and then he's out. And that's pretty much what he does in this. And the first time I saw this movie, I loved the twist ending. But every time now, it just feels like that's what we're only building towards and the rest of the film doesn't concentrate on the rest of the film. So the pacing can sometimes drag and that does bother me a little bit now looking back on it. 
But overall, the cinematography for this film is beautiful. I thought the score worked really well for it. I did feel like this, you know, there's certain scenes that will get under your skin. Um, I don't really enjoy the sex scene between Lisa Bonet and Mickey Rorick because he's 20 years older than her and she's supposed to be 17, even if she's only, tw even if Lisa Bonet is 20 years old. It just, it's a little uncomfortable, especially when you find out that Mickey Rourke is her father. So that makes it even a little bit more uncomfortable. Certain aspects of that still don't work for me but overall I still really do enjoy this film and I can definitely recommend it I think it's a uh uh, definitely not the greatest film, but I do think it holds up really well. It's definitely a good story. It's not the greatest story, but I think it's still a good story. But the cinematography, the score, and the psychological horror aspects, I do think really will carry this film. And it's the reason why I like the film that this that is 35 years old, I could still go back to and still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So I could definitely recommend it from a film standpoint. Now, let's talk about the 4K Blu-ray. There's already been a Studio Canal release of Angel Heart on 4K Blu-ray. It's not in this steel book though. So in the United States, this is our first 4K Blu-ray release of this. It's a Best Buy exclusive steel book and it's distributed by Lionsgate. The transfer is exactly the same as the Studio Canal release. In fact, it says Studio Canal right on the discs, right on the back of the box. So they're just really taking the discs Lionsgate and just distributing them all around in this 4K steel book. And it's nice because even though you know, Studio Canal makes it, and if it did come out in the UK, most 4K Blu-rays are region-free, so it's not a big deal if you've already had this and you don't live in the UK, you can always just go grab it. That's why, if you notice, the price of this was pretty cheap, and that's why they did make sure to change around and have the 4K Blu-ray in a nice steelbook like this to make more people like try and jump on it. This kind of reminds me of the Cabin in the Woods 4K, where they just took an old copy and just repackaged it to try and like throw people off but it, it's not, it's an old copy. This scam was done in 2019, so it's still really good though. It's a great scan, don't get me wrong, I just wanted to make sure that people were aware that this is in a brand new scan, so if you do have the Studio Canal release that came out in 2019, don't feel like you need to get it, it's the exact same thing. The visuals on this are very good. It's got HDR10, it's got Dolby Vision, so it definitely looks beautiful, the colors pop. The first time I saw this was on a DVD copy that looked horrible. So for me, this was a big up Great from every other way I've ever seen this. I've seen it only on DVD and I've only seen it on streaming. So it was a big jump for me. The colors really popped. The HDR really did make things make the colors pop more off your screen. I mean, for the most part, it's 1955, so you're getting a lot of grays and browns, and you know, it's not gonna be a flashy neon nightmare or anything like that. It's more of just like you gotta know what you're going for. It's grays, browns, you know, everything's it's raining a lot, not many scenes in the sun, so. You know, the colors for what they are and when they do have the need for the HDR, they definitely do pop. But the 4K resolution makes a big difference too because this movie used to look pretty flat to me, but now it actually, the resolution makes everything look better. I noticed that immediately in the opening scene with the opening credits because I was like, wow! It really did take me by surprise because I've never seen that before in this film. Now, overall, it's not the greatest 4K Blu-ray you're going to ever see visually. I just think it's a big upgrade from what we've gotten previously, so I can definitely recommend it from a visual standpoint. Now, audio-wise, there is a DTS 2.0 and a DTS 5.1 on here. And I did think that both tracks were really good. I actually ended up watching it in 2.0, which is how I've seen it before. And I particularly enjoy that more, but the 5.1 is still pretty good. I really do think that the audio, especially since the, the score for this is a lot, you know, you hear a lot of beating hearts and that's gonna give you a woofer a test, or you know, like it's very much setting the atmosphere and the tone of the film is to make you get under your skin and give you that like, like sense of dread of like what the mystery is being uncovered because this is very much a psychological horror film as much as it is a neo-noir film so the score has to work with that and I think that the audio tracks that are put on this film are very good and they really do help move the film along and the 4k blu-ray definitely does help that especially from previous version now the big upgrade is obviously on the packaging so the packaging for this is a slipcover 4k now we are big fans of this over here on the channel because we do love the what this adds to it mainly because always steel books always were like this where there was nothing on them you know you, they would come with 
Um, a slip that you could put back inside here where it would give you the information of how long the runtime is. A description of the film and when it was made and all the every all the details that you could find online, which is what I assume they were banking on. But now they put them on the back of the slip cover, which I really do appreciate. And what they do with these slip covers is it does really add to the film, to the slip cover itself. So you see how the fire goes over and you got the smoke and it really does make it look very different than if you didn't have that. And I really do appreciate that. I do appreciate that they did that. And even if they didn't actually have this slip cover on it, it's a very nice steel book on its own. You get Robert De Niro with his egg, which is another classic scene in there for me personally. I just, I've never seen anyone open an egg like that and with his ridiculously long nails that he has. If you didn't know he was the devil then, I don't know when you will. But look at that. You can actually see, like you get his face right on the inside. So I did really appreciate that, the effort that was put into the steelbook to make it feel a little different. And there are some good extras on here as well. Actually, a surprisingly good amount for a Lionsgate release, but I'm pretty sure these were all Studio Canal extras that are just carried over, but because usually most mainstream studio releases don't have these many extras, but this one actually did. It's got an introduction from Alan Parker, a commentary from Alan Parker, some behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, trailers. It's, it's a surprising amount, like some making of documentaries, like it doesn't have a full fleshed retrospective making of documentary on here like I would have always preferred, but there really is a good amount to get some information from this film, like if you were trying to do some deep dives on Angel Heart, there's definitely plenty of inf information on there. They got a whole thing about voodoo and how, because that plays a big part in this film as well. And you get a lot of that information on the 4K Blu-ray disc and on the Blu-ray disc, and I really did think that that really did help the quality of this, because I really didn't expect that, because I was expecting a Lionsgate release not to have a lot, but once I did some research and, and realized that it's a Studio Canal release, I'm less surprised, because Studio Canal is another one of those boutique studios that puts in the effort, and they do some amazing restorations. They put a ton of effort in. So overall, I could definitely recommend this 4K Blu-ray package, because Studio Canal, teaming up with Lionsgate to get this 4K Blu-ray steelbook out to us. I think they did a great job. I'm very happy that I made the purchase. Um, the film overall is very good. It's not the greatest film you'll ever see. It holds up pretty well all these years later. It's got some good performances. Now the 4K Blu-ray steelbook is very well made. I think it's a beautiful design. The Studio Canal release from 2019 with the transfer of um, 2K4K and its restoration, I think is really well done. I think it's beautiful. If you do have that 2019 restoration and you have the Studio Canal release on its own, don't feel like you need to write on grab it. It's the exact same thing. Unless you're a big fan of Angel Heart and you want this 4K Steelbook because it is beautiful and I can totally recommend it. So overall, I will probably give this an 8 out of 10. I think it's definitely worth your time. And if you can afford it, it's actually going pretty cheap right now. I believe it's $19.99 as of this recording. So that's not bad at all. You definitely get a nice 4K disc with some love put into it. So I can totally recommend it. And as always, guys, thanks for joining me here on another edition of Let's Talk. I really do hope you enjoyed the video nothing helps us out more than by like sharing and subscribing and telling all your friends <laughs>